Hello everybody and welcome to a Canon 7200mm f4 lens review. Today we're going to be taking a look at this lens from the standpoint of somebody like myself who couldn't afford the 2.8 or the 2.8 IS and we're going to see both from a wedding perspective and from a Tough Mudder event that the pictures out of this thing look incredible. But I'm going to leave this up for some b-roll for some photo examples and we'll get into the specs and details of this lens in a little bit. Enjoy. <music> people are going to be surprised by how great the pictures look out of this $600 lens. It does look from an initial standpoint a little funny. It's definitely a lot thinner than the other ones. It's definitely a lot lighter than the other ones. It does not come with this uh, collar. I did purchase it from Amazon. This one's not a Canon version because the Canon version was like well over five times the cost but for 12 bucks it's a collar so I don't really much care. But you know, it gets the job done, and, and despite the fact that this isn't a large lens and you don't necessarily need the color, I do I do think that if you are buying a 600 dollars lens and there is that $12 option from, you know, Amazon that you can look a lot more sweet with, with the color on it. And, and it is a little bit of a different color, but people won't notice that. Another difference from the 2.8s to this one is that I believe that the 2.8s have more of a pedal hood whereas this one is just a straight up beast i mean if you put this thing on backwards you can see just how big and just how much of the camera it takes up but i did shoot this in a tough mudder and i felt that it did definitely help with the sun with the mud with the you know it helped reduce a lot of the capability that the elements around me would have on the lens itself and on the glass itself uh, it is a 67 millimeter thread, so if you are looking for filters, that is where you're going to be looking for. It's an ultrasonic motor with two zooming modes. You can have a 1.2 meter to infinity or a 3 meter to infinity, so that if you're if you're somebody who knows that you're shooting a lot farther of a distance from your subject, you can switch it to this 3 meter mode, and it won't it won't search all the way down to its minimum focal distance of 1.2 meters. It'll stop at 3, which is, I mean, just from the wrist turn, you know, it's a it's a full turn here. And, and then it'll only hunt from that 3 to the infinity. But if you are a little bit closer to your subjects, or you don't necessarily know, I kept it in 1.2 for the entire Tough Mudder event through, you know, follow focus and all sorts of different focusing modes. And I didn't find it ever to be hunting too much. I felt that the focus was pretty spot on, as you're going to be seeing by the examples that I'm just kind of showing. As, as this video progresses from both Tough Mudder and wedding photography points of view. It does have an auto manual focus switch as all lenses do for the most part, but I, I really think that this lens is something that a lot of people need to look into because it, it does not, the, the body of the lens, it's all contained in size. So there is no extension of the lens itself to make it even more extended of a lens and a longer lens like the 24 to 72.8 that I have from Canon, the Series 2 does extend a little bit, but still it's not, personally I'm not one that much cares about that, uh, so it doesn't really bother me even if it did, but it, it is a very nice focus rain, a very nice zoom rain. It's easy when you're shooting to just pick it up, find your, find your rain, and just get your shots that you need. The focus time is incredibly fast. I'm using it on a Canon 6D full frame body and even with the fact that the 6D isn't necessarily known for its autofocusing capabilities, I never once found that I was unable to find my focus or you know it took too long to find the focus with the subjects even with you know Tough Mudder running towards me or with weddings to you know get different emotional moments between the wedding party and the event itself in the, the crowd, in the, in the crowd, the, you know, the family members and friends that were there at that day. So I never really found it to be any bit of a hardship within the focusing, within finding the focus. As you're seeing, the, the pictures are incredibly sharp, even, you know, despite being zoomed in, you know, 100, 400 times. Uh, it, it still looks fantastic, and I think that the focus is probably one of the best out of the lenses I've owned slash tried. 
and I, I'm really excited with with owning this and for it being well under half the price of the the, the big boy lens the 2.8 IS of this I never once felt like I was being compromised by being at f4 for this focal length I think f4 is a pretty good standpoint because in a lot of cases in my cases, I didn't need the extra light that the 2.8 would provide, but I feel like at f4, you do have a little bit more of a, of a levy with your focusing. So if you are doing a quick change in shots, that 2.8 versus the f4 might give you a little bit more success with finding that focus. And I feel like it just, it, it never once hindered me. Even at the wedding for the very low light situations, I had a speed light on. I didn't find it to be too big of an issue at being f4. I found that I was still able to see there were some pictures that I used it for, uh, you know, finding or when when the cake was cut or when the wedding party was entering the venue scene. I found that there was still a very good depth of field between the subject and the background, no matter what that was, be it other people, the background of the venue space that we were in or whatever it was. I found that it was always very good at and creating that good depth between it and I found that the bokeh was pretty admirable it, I'm I like my bokeh I'm not too into you know oh this is just a little bit different of a bokeh I'm not that into bokeh as I probably should be and most of you probably are but I found that it's very good as you're seeing these picture examples the bokeh looks really good there's a very good distinguish between the foreground and the background subjects and I just feel like this lens for anybody who's interested and I'm making this video because I was searching for this video and I want to give some of these, you know, help answer some of those questions for those that either can't afford the 2.8 or are just thinking, I just need a quick 7200 millimeter to get started in my kit, which is exactly what I did with this right here. And, and it works perfectly. Do I intend on getting the 2.8 in due time? Yes. Uh, I feel like it probably will be more beneficial in certain situations to have a 2.8 or it just might, you know, help you a little bit more. I don't think that this at all is a hindrance. I never once felt, dang, I need that 2.8 or I just don't feel like this is the, the right choice of a purchase. I, I want you guys to, to know going into it, yes, this is a good valuable purchase that will take you a very long way in your photography career. I think that the 7200 focal length is a beautiful focal length because it really gets you into the intimate moments. And, and if you are somebody who knows exactly how valuable the 7200 is, you will definitely agree with me that as somebody who didn't have one before in my kit, it makes a huge difference to be able to, to just stand back and to be a little bit more stealthy for events like weddings where, you know, if, if I didn't purchase this before the wedding because I bought it maybe a week or two before I had my wedding shoot, I would have been just standing probably from you to me away because I'm using a 50 millimeter on my camera body now and I have a 24 to 70 already. I would have been really super close to everything that was going on and that's just not a good situation so if you if you don't have a 7200 this is a great choice for canon users and you know others that are interested in converting this but i just feel like this is i just want you to know going into your purchase that you don't need first lens purchase of this focal length to be the biggest dog on the market is it nicer to have it yes it is a heck of a lot heavier it does have more features with the IS and things of that nature and the 2.8 advantage, but if you are somebody who can control your light, is good at controlling your light, and has a camera body in, that can push the ISO a little bit more maybe, or be a little bit more comfortable editing in post, this is definitely a lens for you. So I hope that this video review gave you some more confidence in buying this lens, or if you do have this lens, hopefully you can agree with me on some of these points. If you have any questions or suggestions, on this lens, other lenses, what else do you want to see from my kit? I'd be more than happy to do more videos like this so that whatever level of photography you're at, I can help provide some insight to somebody who's still going through the building process of a portfolio and a career in photography and videography. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to drop your comments and thoughts below. How do you like this lens if you own it? How do you think it compares to the 2.8 as somebody who doesn't own the 2.8? Um, do you think my points are valid as somebody who doesn't own a 2.8? I want to hear your opinion and, and hear what you guys have to say moving forward so, so I know exactly how to direct these videos and you guys know that I'm coming at you from a pretty good, honest standpoint. But thank you so much for watching this video. Enjoy. 
some some beautiful pictures and b-roll as we as we lead out but this lens is worth it it'll get you exactly what you need and you'll definitely not just dis be disappointed thanks for watching everybody have a great day